This week on the Jock and Nerd podcast, we reviewed 1995's Godzilla vs. Destroya, plus Super Bowl trailer reactions, breaking down the Deadpool and Wolverine teaser, a new Karate Kid has been cast, and more, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, February 12th, 2024. Yo, 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 this is Rob Liefeld, creator of Deadpool, Cable, X-Force, Domino. You are listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. You want the most up-to-date comic book movie and TV news? You found it. Fun? You bet. Puppets? With substance abuse issues? Oddly, yes. Only here on the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Does it get any better than this? I don't think so. Listen, Rob Liefeld, creator of all the stuff you love. Saying to you, listen to the Jock and Nerd podcast. So sexy, so awesome. I never miss it. And uh, it's my favorite thing in forever. It's spectacular. It's awesome. I love it. Jock and Nerd. Check. Check one. All right. This is Roy Crabs out there. Let's give it up. Listener, what's up? Thanks for pressing play and welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's a nerd. And joining us, he's a very popular Deadpool variant. Also knows a thing or two about pegging. It's Rug Pool. <laughs> Rugs, how's it going? What's up? I, I unfortunately I know a little bit too much about pegging. And uh, <laughs> isn't it just that thing where you, it's uh, something I like to forget? Where you, you just know? I thought pegging is the thing where you find a girl named Peggy, and then you like take her out for ice cream and some coffee or something. You know, just a nice, sure. a nice night out. That's not pegging. Sure, no. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. It's you hang out with Captain Carter. Yeah, and, Peggy uh, Carter. Yeah. yeah, it's not. <laughs> Anyways, it's when people stick things in your slack hole. Yes. Oh, the slack hole. Peg. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll find out more about Disney and pegging, which is a, a sentence I never thought I would utter. But here we are. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Anthony, how you doing? I'm fine. Right. I don't know a thing about pegging. That's for sure. No. OK, well, we can all learn together. It's an educational well, podcast. I don't know if you want to learn together. No, I, maybe not. Maybe I, maybe I worded that wrong. Jesus. Uh, all right. Everyone's good. <laughs> Jesus is not here. But there, Josh is, though. But there was a lot of commercials about him last night on that one show. It's very weird. Oh, yeah. He was on that one washing show. People, he was washing people's feet. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get to that one show and a couple of other things right now. Let's do it. The Jock and Ned Podcast. I didn't know Jesus uh, had, had money like that. Uh, throwing $8 million around for every 30 seconds. Whatever. Uh, of course, we were going to we're going ah. to discuss a little bit the Super Bowl movie trailers. I picked out a couple uh, and our just our overall thoughts of the show. It was a fantastic episode of football uh, season finale. <laughs> Jesus it's great. Christ. But first, breaking news. Uh, a while ago, we talked about how Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio are. We're joining two different Karate Kid universes to come back and give us a new Karate Kid movie. Well. They yep. have found their new Karate Kid. Oh, shit. Sony Pictures has cast Ben Wang, uh, best known as the star of the Disney Plus series American Born Chinese, to star in the new Karate Kid movie. Ben beat out thousands of submissions and auditions of people entering because they had like an open tasking call. You could go to the website and submit. Um, ben speaks fluent Mandarin, which I think helped him. And he knows many forms of martial arts, including karate, Wing Chun, Kung Fu, Gumdo, Kempo, and Taekwondo. So he's the whole package. He's currently you say Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Yeah. Ta- taekwondo. Take two dos. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone say it. Call it Taek- Taekwondo. Taekwondo. <laughs> taekwondo. You what? know, I can't pronounce Why are you anything. saying it like I- that. I like that you think Ben Wang is the whole package. The whole package. And I also think that Ben Wang stood out. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. What, yes. What well, he sticks out among the other ones. The Ben Wang. <laughs> Is it just the name? Yeah. 
But like, this good. It's got a nice ring to it. Can you imagine? Yeah. Ben Wang. We just say Ben Wang, real big. Karate Kid. Yes. By the way, this movie is scheduled to come out December of this year. This is how quickly they're going to throw this thing together. Really? Yes. December 13th, no 2024 is what the release and date is. they just is. cast? There's yes. no way. They just cast this dude. They have a director. I do Yeah, writer, right? He's just like, you know you know how to do this stuff? All right, we're going to have to train you. Let's go. Yeah, just make some start shit shooting. up. Start shooting. Start, start filming. It's fine. We'll fix I'm it. I'm sure he's post. way further along than Ralph Macchio ever has been. Oh, you can't be. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Can't be. He's a master <laughs> of multiple martial arts. You can't be that not further along than Ralph Macchio. Uh, ben Wang's 24, and if you look him up, he looks like he could easily play a teenager, right? So different. Well, Asian don't raisin. Asian don't raisin. That's the saying. I do love that saying. Yeah. Uh, similar to Machio was what, like 35, playing like 15 he, year old. No, he wasn't that old, but no. he, he was in his he was in his mid 20s when he started the role. Oh, so this guy is similar, um, similar age. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen uh, what's that show? American Born Chinese. So. No, I haven't seen it either. Here we are. We got a new Karate Kid. Let's get excited. Keep keep it going. We get Cobra Kai, season five. Yeah, Cobra this Kai. Year. Yeah. Yeah. The the weird thing we talked about this when they first announced it. The weird thing I'm still trying to figure out. Two things. One, Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio in the same movie, yeah. meaning those now are all canon to the same universe. But then two, will this play off of anything that's been done in Cobra Kai? I yeah. I have a feeling like that's too complicated and they're just going to have to ignore. <laughs> but that'd be so, but the, so yes, silly. It but doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because it's the movie. The, the only reason that they're making this, the only reason that there's any interest in this is because of that show. Because of Cobra Kai. Right. Yeah. And then to just be like, yeah, we're going to make a, another sequel, but we're going to ignore the reason you got interest, interested, back interested in our franchise seems kind of silly. I mean, maybe they start putting in people from the show. We could do it. That would make sense, but uh, what's his name? Jolo's Blue Beetle now. I guess he could be in this. Uh, then that would be exciting, but so far, we don't know anything about what it's going to be about. It will take place in the East Coast. It's the only thing anybody knows. And uh, yeah, throw in one or two of those guys. Because like you got his kids and... and uh, uh, well, you already have Ralph Macchio in yeah. it, so Dan- you just can Danielson- have to acknowledge it. He has to go back to Newark, New Jersey for some reason. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that's where he's from. Yeah. And uh, maybe that's when he's going to run into Jackie Chan. And I feel like William Zopka needs to be in this. Why wouldn't they bring Johnny with them? He's a, a, my favorite character on that show. Yeah. He still does. It's like a no-brainer. Yeah. But anyways, in the meantime, we got the Wang. We got the Wang. Yes. <laughs> we got the Johnson. We got the, There's no Johnson. What are you talking about? <laughs> we got the pecker. No, I don't. Uh, okay, let's get into the big game. The, I can't say the words. I'll get sued. I don't know. Is that still true? Super Bowl. No, Super Bowl it. happened. Nobody's listening to this. Um, Anthony, give us your overall yeah. thoughts. Of how what? Of uh, how the, the presentation, the game, the trailers, the, the commercials <laughs> played out for you. I mean, it's the Super Bowl, right? It's a big thing. Everyone gets together. The game was a pretty good game by the end. Um, fans will, the conspiracy theorists will cry that it's rigged. It's not rigged. Stop it. <laughs> um, good games. Um, good halftime performance. I really, I like Usher a yeah. lot. Yeah, that was pretty that, good. Usher for me is like you guys that happened, anything that happened in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. Big part of growing up as a kid, and be, he's been around forever. Yeah. So seeing him, and then some all the surprise performers he brought out, that was fun. Overall, good. And the commercials. You had a wide range of commercials. Some really strange ones about washing feet. And, <laughs> yeah, those um, are weird. Trailers. You, you're your normal mix of all sorts of shit. So I guess we'll talk about the commercials. What, the, the trailers. Right? We'll talk about the trailers. Any of the commercials stick out to you? What was aside from the washing feet? Oh, I fit? love the Christopher Walken one. That's my favorite one. Oh, that was a good one. Where everybody oh. just does his voice. Oh to yeah, him. to him wherever he goes. Yeah, yeah, that was like great. wherever he goes. But like nobody like under like uh, thirty is gonna get that. <laughs> like, not, like he's gonna go go. They've never seen a movie with Christopher Walken in it. Yeah. So. I mean, I like the Agent State Farm with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was kind of fun to see Arnold. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was silly. I don't remember any other ones. To be yeah, I mean, the overall, I thought the commercials were just okay, and a lot of them were released online beforehand, so it was weird. And 
it was also kind of annoying how every trailer would just show you 30 seconds and then they're like, new trailer online. You were like, fuck, I got to do work. Just show me the fucking thing. But that's yeah, that is annoying now. That's the trend. Well, it's like seven million or something for eight million yeah. for thirty seconds. It's yeah. So expensive that they're like, we're just going to use it to tease something online. Oh, everyone! But I expected that, and so you follow along. The end was exciting, really. That's the only part you had to watch. It was like it was a whole new game at the end. But you were thinking of the halftime show, Imran. I know you're a big music critic. No, it was good. Seeing Alicia Keys was solid, and Luda. And fucking Lil John and all the early 2000s. That was like early 2000s, right? 2000s. Well, yeah, most of it. Yeah. Her, her, her was there as well. Which her, is oh, early. her was great on the guitar. She's shredding. They got on fucking roller skates. That was a lot of fun. I didn't expect that. I was like, oh, he ushers on fucking roller skates. Good for him. One of the prop bets besides like Usher's first song and last song was if Usher would take off his shirt. Oh, and he did. So yeah. the people in my Super Bowl party that... Uh, Saw him one big or that we're watching and bet on him taking off his shirt. We're all going nuts. Like, ah. One of them was me. I was like, yeah, he's definitely taking off. His shirt. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the girl fall off the stripper pole? I did. I saw oh, that. I that, that. That got replayed. In, <laughs> and then there also there was one of like this guy getting tossed in the air. And, like now nah, oh, I'm <laughs> uh, People die. Uh, and then the, the there was the memes online all all day today about because uh, Alicia Keys is married to this guy named Swiss Beats. Okay. And everyone was going, uh, how dare, like, if my wife got caressed on stage like that, it'd be over. Like, how, how the hell is this what they all do? It's entertainment business, man. It's just show. It's the show. Yeah. You got to put on a show. <laughs> it don't mean nothing. It's not personal. Like, this is a town. Hollywood's got full of people who would go to work and dry hump another person. Like, yeah, that's all what they long. do for their job. <laughs> it's just a job, man. Calm down. Did you? And there was a DJ there. Did you know him? Was he famous? I thought Cascade, that was. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting too. They got like EDM. Uh, I, no, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. What were you gonna say? I just find it very funny that people are so critical of like that performance thing, and these are the same people that, that are like talking about how like sex work is like work and you shouldn't like whatever, and like they're just flying off the handle about somebody on stage doing something. It's it, it's I, it makes me chuckle, like the hypocrisy. Yeah. Great. I can't say hippocrasia. <laughs> Hippopotamus. The hip- yeah, I, I've had a drink. Well, look. There's congr- also a hell of a, a press box where Taylor Swift oh. was or a so I mean the sweet she it was her. Ice, it was maxed out. Ice spice. Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Ice Spice. Yep. I was just like, who what yeah. these three hanging yeah. out? Ice Spice hanging out with these two? Yeah, it was it, it, yeah. Interesting. But apparently I learned that I guess Ice Spice is opening for her on the tour oh, so maybe okay. that's what, that makes sense i don't know that might be misinformation and the whole thing up. about like oh my god she's got a show in tokyo and she's never gonna make it do you know the the japanese embassy had to release a statement to its people assuring them don't worry taylor swift is gonna perform and she she will leave after the show there's plenty of time and she got there like with our like in the morning like eight ten hours before i was like why was everybody fucking freaking out? Because they just met the report something to make it, there you know. There was plenty of time from Tokyo to Vegas yeah, after her show. But uh, the uh, Japanese embassy statement was hilarious. I was like, wow, this is great. So, you know what? Congratulations, Taylor Swift, winning her first Super Bowl. It's a huge <laughs> What did you think of Travis Kelsey's uh, Leave Evil Las Vegas? That was, uh, was kind of cringe. It was a cringe, but he was. I was feeling the passion, but it was a little cringe. <laughs> a little, I mean, it was a little cringe. And he yelled at his coach. Oh but yeah, that cl- that they kept showing that too. That became a meme instantaneous. The Duncan Boys, I like that. Oh yes, with Ben Affleck and J Lo, yeah. that was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the one of the guy who is vision impaired and was taking photos with the help of the thing, I was like, that had me tearing up. And I was like, that's oh, actually a really good commercial. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it runs so easy. Oh, yeah, dude, you are. You are me. really the easy. The fucking got me. I was like, oh my god. You are uh, easy. That's the easiest in every. It is. I cry at fucking America's <laughs> Got Talent. Like that's how you, did, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, did you watch the Nickelodeon broadcast of the Super Bowl? I, I did switch over, and it was actually really kind of fun what they were doing. First of all, I was like, I can't believe they let them fucking air this on Nickelodeon and just put whatever shit been they doing want on for top. a couple years now. Uh, and I think CBS and Nickelodeon is owned by the same people. So yeah, probably- they've, they've been doing that a couple of years now. We're playing playoff games on Nickelodeon to get kids. SpongeBob is calling the game and they're putting like there's a crab on the game. They're sliming the audience. There's all this <laughs> VR stuff. It was really funny. I was like, this is fun. Look at this. <laughs> I was almost going to watch the whole game that way. I was like, I could just watch the rest of this, but I did. I wouldn't have been surprised if you. Yeah, I know because I was like, it's, they had their own little like b- scoreboard with bamboo. Like it was fun. They did. It was fun. 
but silly. So, yeah. Anyways, let's get to the movie trailers. I just picked out four. That Does it hurt you, Imran, that sports is the biggest thing ever on TV? No, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, we might remember years ago yeah. when you said uh, eSports would take over real sports. Well, there's still time for that. Yeah, there's still page. time. <laughs> there's still time. I don't know what the numbers are yet. I think because uh, I think last year was like the highest ever. It was like 115 million. But they were expecting this to be even beating that. Uh, I don't think Super Bowl 115 million. What are you talking about? Viewers, live viewers are watching the Super Bowl. No, the highest ever was it? I believe so. Look it up. Oh, yeah. That's okay, the number. You're right. I, yeah, you're actually right. Yeah, but they said this one would break that, and I could see it easily breaking that with the fucking Taylor Swift with effect. the t- the Taylor Swift. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious to see. I bet it'll be like 120 or something. It's got to be high. Uh, movie trailers. Let's get to the fucking movie trailers that they tease and don't actually show. There was a bunch we of all them. watched them later, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You every time one was like, watch this online. I went online. I fucking, it worked on me. It's just annoying. It's like making me do work. I picked out four ones that are relevant to us. Let's start with and we're going to work up to the big one. Of course, we're going to start with a quiet place. Day one trailer. It's a prequel. We're gonna work up the Wang. We're going to work up the, to the Wang uh, and Wang doodle it around. Uh, this is the prequel to Krasinski's Quiet Place series, which I really like the first one. It's great. The second one, I think it's good. I don't remember it for some reason. Maybe because it was a lot like the first one. Uh, and this one is the actual aliens invading the planet. How this all happened. Why they can't say shit anymore. Uh, Anthony, what'd you think of this? Have you seen the Quiet Place movies? I haven't. So... I saw the trailer. I went, oh, that looks like a Key and Peele. It does uh, look it like a, jo- a Jordan Peele movie. Jordan Peele, excuse yeah, me. Movie. Yeah, horror movie. Yeah. Then it went A Quiet Place. And I went, oh, yeah. That's a movie a lot. That's a horror franchise a lot of people like. That, that's my thought on it. Okay. It, and it so, had good horror vibes. It had good horror vibes. The trailer. Yeah. So you, you guys tell me. Rugs, what'd you think of a day one Quiet Place? I like Quiet Place. Yeah. Uh, this looks good. Looks pretty good. I think Krasinski's doing this one too. He's not. He's he wrote, wrote it. it. Yeah, he's not directing. My- okay, so he's, he but he but he wrote it. Yeah. So he, yeah. it's a good franchise. It's it's very simple. It's just yeah, you, you know, you can't make a noise, otherwise this fucking thing will kill you. And then that, that's all you need to know. Yeah. No. The monster shots. I thought it was cut really well. It's terrifying with the sound design and the screeching it, and stuff. It reminds me a lot of like. Uh, uh, the uh, the what do you call it the I can't remember the fucking name of it from Stranger Things. Oh, the um, the Demogorgon, the Demogorgon, and the Upside yes. Down. So it reminds you like the Demogorgon. It's very much similar to that, or like any of those weird walking on four thing uh, monsters with big teeth. I mean, the trailer had a lot of good explosions, and you get to see quick shots of these things. This one has stars Joseph Quinn. From Stranger Things, who also might be Human Torch, Johnny Storm. It's the rumor. Once we get that fucking announcement, any day now. Juman Hansu also in this Lupita Nyong'o uh, in the lead there. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll wait till this comes on streaming. Uh, but uh, I do like the first Quiet Place. Listener, you could join this conversation. Let us know what you thought of the Super Bowl in these trailers. Join our Facebook group, Jock and Nerd Nation. Jock and Nerd! It's a fun, exclusive, closed group just for you link in the episode description okay let's move on to a movie that's uh i don't know if it's a reboot or a remake or a sequel but it's i can tell you okay it's called twisters twisters no twisters uh of course the the original twisters from the not twister from the 90s bill paxton right this trailer was weird because it looks like they're redoing that first movie uh, and Anthony, what do you think of the trailer? And is what is this? So when we saw this, I was watching the Super Bowl with a big group of people. Everyone saw the trailer coming out. They're like, oh, no, what is this? Is this what we think it is? And then the title card hits and it's Twisters. And everyone was convinced it was a re- reboot because there were scenes that were copying yeah. some of the scenes from the original. Yeah. But according to Wikipedia, this is a sequel. Oh, it's a sequel. As far as what do I think of it, I haven't seen Twister in such a long time. I know. But from what I remember, it was actually a decent movie, if not a little bit ridiculous. So I'd have to revisit the movie, but this looked good. 
looked in, looked you know appropriately stupid. I mean, we haven't had like a fun, good, like natural disaster yeah, we haven't had movie, a disaster in, a movie while. in a really long time. Yeah, and there was that whole period where we were getting a ton of them, and they're always fun and stupid. Early two thousands was like peak disaster era. And how do you top one tornado? Like it just put fucking two tornadoes. They they got but sharks in them. They got twins, and then you <laughs> add sharks. This is in your Sharknado rugs. What'd you think of this? Are you a fan of the original? Uh, eh, first one's fine. It's not like my favorite go-to movie, but it was fine. And uh, this one looks like it's fine. You know, not really like enthused about it. I wasn't like, oh my god, I gotta go watch this. <laughs> so, what is? Let's let's. Well, Imran, give me your thoughts first, and then I'll ask a question. I mean, it. Uh, no, it looked like I said it looked like a solid disaster movie. I kind of like the idea of these disaster hunters in the scene where they just ride, they like bolt their car down and just sit through and go through the tornado. Um, but yeah, it looks fine. It looks like something we haven't had in a while, and, and we should have disaster movies. What every so okay, often? Now, now, let's follow up to that. What is your all-time favorite disaster movie? Oh, man. Oh, I mean, that goes back to, like, the 70s and the 60s. Le- oh, boy. Would you consider... What do you consider? Is Titanic a disaster movie? Yeah, I would consider that a disaster movie. A historical da- disaster movie. That's a really good movie. I mean, you have... What about, like, the Armageddon's? That's a disaster the movie. Deep That's kind of a disaster movie. Uh, Rugs, you can chime in, too. Hmm. You got a disaster movie you really like. I like Deep Impact, especially when I'm getting Armageddon. And both came out around the same time. Yeah, I like I think Deep Impact's the better film, but Armageddon's way more fun. Well, you yeah. also had like Day After Tomorrow and 2012 came out at the same time, but I think Day After Tomorrow's better. You know what? That movie Greenland that's actually really good. That came out recently. Yeah, I heard that was great. It's not bad, uh, but. That is a lot of these just there's a lot of silly ones that are like sci fi movies, disaster movies. But you have then you think of like the uh, Poseidon like, adventure back in the day, the towering inferno contagion is contagion a disaster movie. You think I guess. Well, listen, I, I, yeah. You don't make the, the impossible is a good one. Oh, about the flood that has that's Tom Holland. That's early Tom yes. Holland. That one is actually that's, that's what, Tom Holland when he had the birthmark on his face. Yeah, that's oh, what happened to <laughs> the birthmark? We got that removed. He got yeah. it removed. The lasers? Can he do that? Dante's yeah. Peak and in Volcano oh, came out the same yep, year. Yeah, yep. That always happens. It's kind of happening again. If you watch all the trailers that came out, there's a trailer for this movie called If Imaginary Friends, John Kaczynski and Ryan Reynolds, and it's like a kids movie. Then there's a trailer for a movie called Imaginary which is like a horror movie about a girl and her imaginary friend coming to life. They're both coming out this Ooh. summer. My favorite design. I guess my favorite one, I think Armageddon is just so funny and, and fun. Deep impact is the better one. And actually like you kind of feel bad at the end. I'd say Armageddon independence or Titan- eh, Titanic's actually, Titanic's this one. but Titanic's not like super watch rewatchable. You only want to really watch like the boobies in the end. Yeah, you you can skip the whole first <laughs> half of that movie. You just yeah, you, again, you don't really want to watch all the love stories. No, no you just after. fast forward until the fucking ship hits the iceberg. Unless, unless you were a thirteen year, a twelve, uh, a girl ranging from eight to sixteen years old back in ninety seven, you weren't really into that. Uh, no, you uh, just start in the middle. You'd be saving yourself yeah. a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> in Twisters, you have Glenn Powell. That's one of the guys there. You know who else is in this movie? David Corinswin. Well, we're gonna see Superman in the old one in in the new one, Twisters. Uh-oh. Yeah, we got Corin Sweat in the Twisters. Anthony Ramos also in this movie. I like Anthony Ramos, so uh, it'll be a fun yeah, disaster summer films. disaster film. Bring him back. Bring him back. Roland Emmerich, where you at? I know they need. Uh, <laughs> they got to pitch all of these to Roland Emmerich. He's made some good disasters and disaster movies. Uh, okay, now things are heating up. Let's move on to this next one. I think we're all excited for. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes releases a full official trailer. We had that teaser, which is gorgeous. Uh, this movie set 300 years after War for Planet of the Apes. So we're seeing the descendants of everything that happened in those movies. Anthony, let's start with yes. you. What stuck out? Are you, it's giving you Geek Boner, Floppy Jock. Oh, I'm full, full masked Chicken Wang Geek here. Boner. The Wang um, is working. Yeah, the the Wang still works. Ben Wang, 
<laughs> no, not Ben. No. Uh, no, this, you know, I, I repeatedly have said I love the Planet of the Apes movies. The, the new ones are so good, much better than they ever had any right to be. I love the old ones too. Yeah. I, yeah. I like all. The only one I don't like is the, the which one I call it? The dude that directed the original Batman, Burton. Oh, Tim the Burton. Tim Burton like, one is a horrible Tim Burton one that ends one in a be, weird. It, yes. It's just so fucking confusing how it even ends. I don't even understand what's going on there. Nobody wanted to even be in that movie while they were making it. <laughs> yeah. So all that, but this movie looks looks pretty good. I mean, just because Caesar is dead doesn't yeah. mean the story. Like, there's plenty of story to mine here. I like the idea of 300 years later. Yeah. I like that now we have the humans being um, enslaved, which is what you saw in the original one, original Planet of the Apes. And it sounds like a lot of um, what this movie is going to be based on is like how Caesar's legacy has kind of been perverted by the apes. And right. some apes are using it nefariously. Um, and there's different clans. So I think all of it looks appropriately epic and it still looks really damn good. Yeah. Uh, the only pause I have is Matt Reeves isn't involved, nor is um, fucking dude from the first one. Oh, uh, Rupert Wyatt. I believe. No, not Rupert Wyatt. Oh. Um, but uh, Rupert Wyatt's good director. Yeah. Uh, the, the the guy that played the season. Oh, 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 Andy Circus. Andy Circus. So I'm not sure involved. Circus is helping out with the mocap here. He must be because I know they yeah. they all take ape classes. But it looks damn good. It yeah. looks damn good. And this is supposed to be the start of a new trilogy too. So and the tone the tone is similar to that trilogy. Like it's see you know I think it it matches it and carries on very well. Rugs, what did you think of this? Who is this lead? Uh, our lead protagonist here you think she's the witch from the witcher she's the girl from the witcher no i'm uh, saying the ape protagonist well they're both he's helping her the, yeah. i don't know what his name is but noah uh, noah oh noah yeah. is the ape or the girl so, oh it's the ape. he's like kind of like a, he's dissenting with this whole like uh enslaving the humans thing and sees that this human girl is special and capable of rational thought and stuff so yeah, she's, he, uh, she's smarter than the rest of them. I love that line where he's like, apes hunting humans. That's wrong. Their speech has gotten uh, more advanced, which is also interesting. They're also learning that like the world that they inherited uh, it, you know, is it once belonged to regular humans. Right. right. They were able and to I'm, do... I don't, and yeah, so it's interesting that rediscovering the past. That when King's name, I think, is Proximus Caesar. He looks awesome. Yeah. Was there another spot? Was the TV spot the one where he's like, what a wonderful day? And he keeps repeating it and they keep saying it back. That was really good, too. I, I believe I, that was the TV spot. That was the yeah. TV spot. That was great. That was a great little bit. But yeah, this looks amazing. I'm so super, super stoked for this. Timeline wise, Anthony, are we getting closer to the original Charlton Heston movie? Remember, the, sh the ship took off at the end of the first one. That's true. You're, you're right. I mean, they could. I mean, we're pretty close um, timeline wise. If you wanted to tie it back to that one, you theoretically could. Yeah, we're pretty close now. I feel like that's what they've been like slow playing is like it's going to end up where at that first movie. Uh, but yeah, slicks dope. Uh, this one by director Wes Ball and a bunch of people in here. I don't really know. Freya Allen, Kevin Duran, William H. Macy. I know him. Owen Teague playing Noah. Yeah, the uh, the special effects look fucking flawless, and they just get better and better. Yeah, and what's what the what's great about those first three is they're big CGI spectacles in a lot of sense, but then they're also that's not what it revolves around. Even yeah. though the movie could just completely revolve around the fact that you're seeing apes that look amazing and talk, but they actually have this like almost like um. But like myth mythic story with Caesar, yeah, and the, like all yeah. the, it, it's like a he his rise and yep, his fall yep. and all this, like it's like a t this telling of gods, the relationship and the, how he led his people and keeping them in check and setting the rules and like they he says the line in this ape stronger together that was like one of their yeah their that was one tenets. Of the things, yeah. also you see that symbol the little star thing from the attic window that continues in all the movies like this orang oh yeah that was the what caesar drew in the window yeah this orangutan's wearing a necklace with it you see it painted on some of the structures so i was like oh shit there's that symbol that's very cool so uh this one this one i can't wait this one's coming out may 10th 
All right, let's get to the main event here. The one we've all been waiting for. It's here. Deadpool 3 is officially titled Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, shit. And they gave us a two minute. They're calling it a teaser, but it was over two minutes. Let's break this down. Uh, Rugs, let's start with you this time. What did you think of what they showed us? And more importantly, what they didn't show us here in this first teaser. Well, the TVA comes and gets Deadpool. That's crazy. So he's already getting hip to the whole rest of the Marvel Universe that maybe he knew existed. Maybe he didn't know. Or I don't know how they're going to how this whole thing's going to play out. But they're going to send him on a mission to, uh, I don't know, do something with it. Do so, uh, Save the Marvel Universe. Either save the Marvel Universe or kill or the Fox <laughs> Universe. Or one of the other, but yeah. Is it so. so meta that he's literally like almost saving the Marvel universe? I don't know. You're putting a lot on this movie, yeah. But I think yes. it's still going to be worth the price of admission just to see Hugh Jackman and and Deadpool uh, on screen together. They do tease Wolverine. We all know. We've seen the photos. So that's the thing. Let so. me ask you. We all saw the photo. This is the worst kept secret that he's in here in the yellow suit. And I was. Well, they're not really keeping it a secret. No, but I was fully expecting. They didn't do the reveal. They really are holding back on a lot of things, and I'm okay with it. I kind of like this hyping it up where you just get to see his shadow and the top of him. Were you? What did you guys think overall? Did they not show enough, or did they just show just enough to you? Rugs. Well, if you've, if you've been online, you've seen everything, so it's like yeah. It's fine if they want to keep it for all the other people, like, secret. And it, it works fine for me. You got to pop the claws. That's all you need. Yeah, you know who that is. Uh, Anthony. I, I, don't think, I think that the banter between the both of them is going to be what you're going to go oh, for. Oh, absolutely. And whether are they going to be friends first or enemies. Um, Anthony, uh, how'd this hit you? What'd you like? What did you, you notice? I'll answer your question, and then I'll talk about what I like. Okay. Your question to Ruggs. Yeah. I, selfishly, I would have liked to see in Wolverine, but I think it's smart to just... You don't need to. Yeah. You know, you know what Hugh Jackman looks like. Yeah. Part of the draw will be seeing Hugh Jackman in the yellow suit. And you, you've, you've seen it. Looked online. You've seen it. But it'll still, you know, they can hold that back. They, they have it in the title, Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. So you know he's going to be there. So would I have liked to have seen it? Sure. But that's just me being selfish and wanting to see stuff early. As far as the trailer, um, I like the trailer. It looks like they're recruiting Deadpool to keep track of the timeline or prune it you have a lot of the meta deadpool stuff that is deadpool you know him referring to the disney and yeah. marvel cinematic jesus i all that am stuff. marvel jesus is an amazing right. line that's amazing right and then you know you have the the violence and stuff um you know this could be super super meta and them having him like correct the wrongs that they've fucked up on screen which would be kind of clever yeah you know like if they had him prune captain marvel or something stupid i don't think they'll go that far but if they, maybe if they had them had it like be a commentary of maybe they've kind of made some mistakes and they've cleaned up that might be kind of fun it also might just kind of be fun the way it is too um do i think that this will turn around the marvel universe I don't know if it'll turn it around, but it's the only movie coming out, and I think it'll be, at the very least, pretty entertaining. Um, I don't know that like them doing this means that like the other movies will be better, because this is such a, just a wild, different flavor. Sure. But I'll say I like the trailer. I think it kept in tone with what... It didn't seem like Disney-fied. It seemed yeah. more you know in the tone that the other Deadpool movies have been, and you know as long as you're letting Ryan F Reynolds do his thing, I think it's fine, and Hopefully, you know, this movie performs well and I get to see Ryan Reynolds maybe in like one crossover with other and other. Characters. Oh, he's definitely going to be in Secret Wars. Uh, and yeah, the, I know, like that pegging line is amazing because he says pegging in Disney and looks right in the camera. And the fact that this R rated this technically their red band trailer. They put out another one where they change that line to R rated instead of pegging like R rated is a new for me, but it is for Disney. So I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. But I love let's just break down that what we see here in the beginning is a birthday party. All everybody's there. And you see like Dopinder 
and Peter and Shatterstar and Vanessa and you know makes you remember at the end of the second movie he fucked with time saved a bunch of people maybe he's in an alternate timeline now which is why the TVA comes to get him that wig is amazing the toupee that he has and then him watching the MCU in the TVA is wild so like he is aware of this Marvel Cinematic Universe. He even says it. He goes, "This your cinematic universe is about to change, which is crazy. So I don't understand what they want him to do. That guy, by the way, that he's talking to, Matthew McFadden from Succession, just won an Emmy. But if you have the captions up, it says his character's name is Mr. Paradox or Dr. Paradox, who is a character from the comics. Uh, But he's just like... Time, well, do you want to step up and be a hero amongst all the heroes? So, yeah, it's unclear. Do you think that it's kind of a cheat to use a comedy where you have no rules or anything, nothing has to make sense to, like, try and reset the Marvel Universe? I think that that's lame, but I don't think that they're going to do that. I think they're teasing that, but I don't think that's what it's end up going to happen. That's a good question. It, you know, it's yet to be seen how far they go with this, because at some point, you know, you, you got to rein it in. You can't go. It's like. You built up the entire Marvel Universe to Infinity Gauntlet and all that other stuff. Yeah. And then you go, oh, we're going to redo everything through comedy. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a strange idea. But. but the first two movies are comedies, but they have emotional parts. And there there's some some heart and like it. So they, 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 they always manage to. I just felt like Marvel had so many opportunities with, with like Doctor Strange and and all these other things where they could have done it and they're going to choose to do it. If they do something in this movie, it's going to be weird. I don't think they're going to. Maybe hopefully they're smarter than that, but uh, I, I mean, be interesting th- to see there's a lot. I think there's a lot riding on this movie and there was a lot of expectations coming into this trailer and it is very interesting how much they did hold back because it's still July. It's a bunch of months away. They're going to have several more trailers. They have a lot more to show. Um. Uh, you see, I think you see a little bit of Madripoor where you see the back of Logan in the white jacket. And then rumor is that that's not Hugh Jackman, that that's like the MCU version of Wolverine because Madripoor was introduced in Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? They went to Madripoor. Yeah. yeah. So the other rumor I saw that that may be like Daniel Radcliffe as Wolverine. I think prepare for lots of variants. Lots of crazy cameos. All of the X-Men people. Uh, that one scene in the woods. Also, people have pointed out, it looks like the opening of Avengers Age of Ultron. Those woods that he was in, right? So maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah, that's what people are speculating that he's. So there were, there's rumors online that he's jumping around different points in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, you That one scene where he's reloading the guns in slow-mo is fucking dope. And you see the broken 20th century Fox logo in the background. That one dude is pyro from X-Men first class. The guy who says that line, I forgot what he says, but he see, he has a quick line. Uh, and so pyro's in this, Oh, the, the shot of the bald dude with the pointy ears. That's Emma Corrin's character reportedly rumored to be Cassandra Nova, which in the comics is, uh, Charles Xavier's twin sister, that like he killed in the womb and then she formed herself back up again with DNA or something fucking wacky like that. <laughs> yes. So that's who I think she's playing. Uh, then there is a secret wars Easter egg on the floor. I don't know if you guys caught that at the very end where he's lying down and we see the Wolverine shadow uh, over on the far left. There is the cover of Jonathan Hickman's secret wars issue number five that features doom and the Beyonder. And so that is in there. So I'm wondering when this movie takes place after Loki. What happened in Loki? When do you think this movie takes place before? And I I like meeting different people. I don't know if Mobius is going to be in this or anybody from Loki, but this is just another TVA guy. Uh, I guess this is after they reformed and Loki is sitting in the tree. Yeah, that's I think it's. I mean, I don't know. To be honest, it doesn't really give a ton of clues. Yeah. But I would speculate this is after Loki has formed the new TVA, and the TVA now is more about investigating Kangs and not necessarily uh, pruning the universe. But I, I don't really know. And with with it being a multiversal story, it doesn't really 
can't really pinpoint where it's at. I don't, I don't really even know where. I mean, it sounds like. I mean, even the last, uh, the ending of Deadpool two. Yeah. It ends with him being able to time jump and clean up the Fox universe. Yep. Yeah. He had that thing from Cable, right? And he shoots right. himself and he shoots Ryan Reynolds before he writes Green Lantern. Hilarious post credit scenes. Um. So, oh, man, are they in the void? That's the other thing I was asking uh, in some of these scenes. And the big question is Taylor Swift going to be in this fucking movie because they're all buddies. She could be Dazzler. I saw another rumor that she may be Lady Deadpool. But that would be, I don't know. You don't really need her in there, but it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> She's in everything. If you look on the IMDb page, uh, on here are Jennifer Garner as Electra, Patrick Stewart, and then all the other people we already saw in the trailer. So that's all they got. But Aaron Stanford returning as Pyro. We got Ben Affleck coming back. No, it doesn't say. Doesn't say, but I'm like, why is Electra? Why did they have that on the IMDb? It's not always accurate, but man, I can't wait for July and the 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 upcoming trailers. I think they did a great job at just feeding that anticipation and holding back and leaving you wanting more with this trailer. So I thought it was I thought it was very good. Yeah, I thought it was a solid trailer. I, I you know not super mind blowing, yeah. but just enough to give you that. Hey, it's Deadpool. It's R-rated. He's in the MCU, and he might be jumping around. And like and you, you get Wolverine tees. Like well, like you also. I was like, oh, they didn't show fucking Hugh Jackman, but I was like, you know what? That's okay. It keep it keeps me looking what forward for yeah. something. Now, that's going to be a big reveal when they do it in the trailers. Um, related news. Did you see this? Rob Liefeld has announced that he is retiring from working on Deadpool uh, after he finishes uh, the series this summer. He's done. He's done with Deadpool and Marvel. Uh, congratulations. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what do you say? Sure. I don't yeah. know. Enjoy your retirement. <laughs> he's. I think he's starting another book with. Uh, I mean, like, is, is it's Marvel's call, not his. I guess. Right? Yeah. He says uh, since 1990, Leefield has written and illustrated more than a thousand pages of Deadpool content and hundreds of covers. So, eh. all right, good. Marvel will take over now. I mean, I like Layfield. I think he's a fun personality. You can make, make fun of him, but he's still in the game, still doing books. Occasionally, and I will it, listen to his podcast. He knows a lot about comics. He knows a lot about the history. That's for sure. Sure. Yeah. Can he draw feet yet? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> he roasts people that like fucking call him out on that. What does he go like? Oh, you can't draw at all. Well, so one guy posted something and he's like, what the fuck is this? So like pointing out a bicep or something. And then he just quote tweets it and goes, that's the uh, comics career you wish you had. But he's <laughs> I was like, okay, it's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, he's got a good sense of humor about it. Right. Uh, so hey, you can go. If people go hard at you, you can go hard back. You can go hard back. And everybody, I mean, there's a, like a parody Lee field Twitter account that is hilarious. Where the guy like redraws the Watchmen in like Leafield style and explains it. It's so fun. Hey, I mean, you know, we can make fun of him. He got to live out his dream and he draw did. the way he wants. I mean, he was a fucking rock star. He got to draw exactly what he wanted to do, created some iconic characters, even though he just stole others, put them together, whatever. It becomes new. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a lot of it's probably a- the way I see it is that he did something that was a catalyst. Yeah. And all of a sudden paved the way for other artists to bring something new to the table. And I think that uh, we have a lot more diversity in art because of that. And a lot more, uh, I I guess a a lot more attention to anatomy, a lot more attention to like drama and like manga or manga or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. All the shit that he was ripping off. basically, Just making dynamic pages, but like that whole wave, nobody was doing that. Nobody had seen that. Listen, he wouldn't be able to do what he did with Image if he wasn't popular, and he sure, was. Sure. So what are you going to do? I mean, I got X-Force number one somewhere in my, buried in, in these comics, so I don't know if it's worth anything. I think Rob Layfield is like the Taylor Swift of his time. Yeah, we said that. You said that, and or you said it the other way around. What did you say? But that was very good. I said, like, well, like, Rob Layfield well, you said is Vaughn ba- was like the Rob Layfield of uh, yes. you, <laughs> movies. You, anytime that you could take somebody who's <laughs> Who's like 
just okay or not too bad, and then but, milk but it. they get <laughs> and they get catapulted to like stratospheric yeah. uh, status. That's called leaf fielding. That's lay fielding. Yes, <laughs> it's called lay fielding. Like, but he, he's still around and he's still yeah. he's still something. So you can't really take that away from him. Yeah. So that yeah, guy had a crazy career. Okay. Um, finally, just want to remind everyone: by the time this show posts, Madam Web is out. We will be Ooh. we will be reviewing Ooh. it on Valentine. Now we won't review it on Valentine's Day. It's oh, coming. Gonna, up. Is that what we're doing? No. Reviewing it on Valentine's. Yeah, we're Day? gonna have a oh, you son nice of a bitch. date. No, you can take your Valentine's Day date to see it, and we will be reviewing it next week. But it's pretty obvious that Sony themselves have no confidence in this movie. Uh, a couple things you'll note: they never put out. There's only the one trailer. <laughs> like usually, when tickets go on sale, they'll put out another trailer. They never put out another trailer. There are yeah. TV spots with some new footage, but just they just have the one trailer, right? Also, the review embargo doesn't lift until the day before the movie comes out. That's never yeah, that's never good. It's never good. So I'm going in with this with super curiosity. It's really it's I'm so curious. What the fuck will is this, this be? Higher than thirty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh man, I think it, I, I think it will, but just by a little bit. It may be like in the, thirty-six. Yeah, mid <laughs> mid thirties, upper. Will 30s. it be better than Argyle? Oh man, mm. that's a good question. Mm. I mean, Argyle was fun though. So this movie doesn't look like it's gonna be fun. <laughs> the thing it just. I was am studying spiders. It just seems <laughs> flat and kind of rote, and it just I you know. Morbius is what I'm. What is it going to be better than Morbius? I don't. And I don't even know uh, definitively now if I can say it will be better or worse. I, 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 it might not be. My father was in the jungle. <laughs> she met him while he was in the jungle researching spiders before she died. <laughs> Ooh, uh, so. the projection for oh yeah, seeing different rumors, but projected to track twenty five million over six days. Over six days, wow! Yeah, the movie is expected to earn in its run only earn fifty six to one hundred and one million, which would make one of the biggest flops of twenty twenty four. Yeah, and be the biggest commercial failure for the Sony Cinematic Universe. Oh, because it's Spider Man Universe. It's going to be from Wednesday and then like President's Day, so they're counting yeah. Wednesday to Monday. Yeah, that's not like good. this is. This should never have been made. Like no. the fact that they they did this because they tried with. Well, Morbius, and they tried with Venom. Venom was like somewhat of a success. That's probably what led them to that. Yep, it's Venom's fault. Yeah, but they should never even try. No, yeah, there's there, there's there's no because Venom's nothing like to be mind here. People wear Venom shirts. Yeah, right. I've never seen a person in a Madam Web shirt, and if you did, they weren't real. <laughs> even at like Comic Cons, where you see people wearing obscure shit, I've never seen a Madam Web fucking cosplay. Maybe once, but that's super. Well, she's an like, old lady. Yeah, comics, she's an right? old lady. If they would have called, if they would have called this movie Spider Girl, the movie, it would have done way better. So I think the only thing that's going to help it, this movie in the six days, is there's really nothing else out. That Bob Marley movie's coming out. Argyle opened at number one again. Yeah, but the thing is, Imran, is when there's nothing else out, nobody's going. No one just go. No one goes. Yeah, <laughs> they, don't, they don't just go. Oh, I'm going to see a movie. Well, I'm thinking of those people who are like go to see every movie. At, like the, what's new that they'll have. How many people? Are I, don't know, people I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they have. It's all anymore. They, they, if it doesn't have buzz, nobody's going to go see it. Right. Nobody cares. No, no one's. I mean, no one's. So, I mean, they didn't even spend money on the Super Bowl. Right. They're like the only oh, people that are going to see this movie are people who have podcasts. Yes. Right. It's good. Everyone here. I'm going to walk in there and be five people. I'm just going to be like. Oh, you all clearly have podcasts, don't you? Yes. Let's trade reviews. We have to see this. Yeah, yeah, yes. I don't want to. So, All right. That'll be fun. That'll be next week. But let's take a break now. We're going to play some promos, and we're going to come back and review a 90s Godzilla movie right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. We'll get you back to your regularly scheduled podcast in just a minute. But we wanted to introduce ourselves. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. And I'm Blake on this highly produced advertisement. That's right. It's the History of Bad Ideas, a.k.a. Hobie. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast and on Facebook at the History of Bad Ideas. But if you like a podcast uh, roundtable with three to five guests, usually every week, depending on sick leave, uh, talking about all things geek, including movies, TV, I ain't getting paid for this shit. 
Blake bitching about something and ranting, uh, and comic books and anything else that we can think of. We have a top five list every week, along with a box office news, and somehow we have listeners, so they send us some feedback we answer every week. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, Spotify, and any good podcast app, because if you can't find us on that podcast app, it's not a good podcast app. Damn straight. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. It's not just any day. It's Mr. Throwback Thursday. Hey, this is Jamie. And this is Bill, and we are the Mr. Throwback Thursday podcast. Do you remember when the wheels were steel and the beats were real? We do, and we talk about it every Thursday. You can check out Woo News, One and Done, Record of the Week, and a whole lot more. That's Mr. Throwback Thursday, keeping it classic on iTunes, Stitcher, and at HighVoltageRadio.com. And always remember, new school stale, old school fresh. Doc and Nerd Listener, if you enjoy the show and you want to give back to all the stupidity you've enjoyed for over the many weeks, months, or years, however long you've been listening, this is a great time to join our Patreon fan club. Visit Jock and Club. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. Jock and Nerd. And you can support and give back on a monthly or annual basis and get access to benefits like an exclusive podcast feed where the shows come out early. There's bonus content. You can join us on our monthly Discord Hangouts uh, this month, February. It will be the 22nd, Thursday, February 22nd, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and uh, other fun things like you can pick a movie for us to watch. You can get a T-shirt. It's a great way to give back all the entertainment value. You've been receiving for free. This is all free every week. We got to put it out, but we need your help to keep going. Jockinner.com slash Patreon. Uh, okay, let's get to this week's review. We decided, I decided, let's. Re- yeah, you want to give some background on why you decided this? This is how it happened. We decided to review a random Godzilla movie. Why? Well, a few episodes ago, we did our monstrous, no pun intended, Godzilla movie tournament. In which I hosted, and John Bellotti Jr. and Anthony Rugboy were the the judges because I had not seen nearly as many Godzilla movies as these guys. I've only seen a handful, so it was a lot of fun, and it was great hearing you guys talk about it. And then I was given homework to catch up and watch some Godzilla movies, which I forgot to do. I had not been doing that. So then I was like, how can I make myself remember? Let's just review a random Godzilla movie. And then I remembered how passionately... Anthony talked about one specific Godzilla movie <laughs> in our tournament. It was and now after watching it and remembering what you said, uh, it makes so much sense. So I picked that one and I'm talking about the 1995 Toho movie Godzilla versus Destaroya, uh, which we are going to review now. Here's your spoiler alerts. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. You were really fighting for that movie. Where did it finish in our in our tournament there? Does anybody remember? It was top four. Oh, yeah. See, so absolutely one that deserves uh my attention uh so this is the 22nd installment in the godzilla franchise and the seventh and final film in the heisei period which ends in 1995 started with godzilla 84 or biolante in 89 wiki says return of godzilla the heisei era yeah return of Godzilla. okay so it went from 1984 to 1995, the last Godzilla film to be produced by anybody until the 98 uh, movie, American movie, and the last Godzilla film produced by Toho until the 1999 film, Godzilla 2000. So this thing comes out in Japan, December 1995, doesn't get to U.S. home video until January 1999, making people wait. I don't know how you got this back then. I'll Maybe we'll find out. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has six reviews. It's at 100%. Oh, shit. I count it. That counts. <laughs> Audience score, 93%. There's a 100 plus ratings there. So six reviews, 100%. Whatever. I'll take it. Uh, I'm not sure the budget of this. You guys, can you guys guess how much probably they spent on these movies? $3. Is it less than like a minus it's, one? I don't know. It's saying here. I, I don't feel like this is right. Yeah, I found all these weird it's saying numbers. on Wikipedia, three point five billion yen, which would be equivalent to thirty four million dollars. That's how much I just it don't made. Believe that. That's how much it made. Oh, box office. Yeah, yeah you're that's right. how you're much right. it made. Uh, apparently, I thought that everywhere I looked, it said it sold 
four million tickets, which is a big deal. I I would say that it it probably cost them two million dollars to make these movies. I think this movie if may ha- have made thirty to forty million, maybe. Oh yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, right. Um, and this one is directed by here's a bunch of names: Takao Okawara with special. Yeah. I said it with special effects by Koichi Kawakita. You have to highlight the special effects guy. I'm not going to say Takao Oka- Okawara did Return of Godzilla, okay. Godzilla vs. Mothra, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, and then later Godzilla 2000. So, and then the movies before this were Space Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla 2. Oh, I see his name. So he did do two previous, okay, Heisei era. Yeah. And previous Heisei and to help to return. Godzilla. So, what I understand from this, this, as this was, and we'll get into like the promotion, as this was the end of the Heisei era, a lot of the crew comes back from the, uh, like all the previous movies for one final movie. But we'll get into why. It is an unrated movie, an hour, 43 minutes long. Anthony, what happens? How many times have you seen this movie? <laughs> oh, a lot. It's been a while though. It's been a long time since I've seen it um, in its entirety, though. So, also, what's fun, listener? You can play along as all these Godzilla movies are on Pluto TV, which is free. There's ad breaks, but it's very convenient. It's very nice to have them there. Uh, so, what happens in Godzilla versus Destaroya? Destaroya, yeah, Destaroya. Um, Godzilla. The Godzilla has recently um, absorbed a lot of nuclear energy from his birth island disappearing, and he is basically now a giant nuclear reactor that's about to explode. And Japan has to figure out how to neutralize him before he destroys the world, not because of his own doing, but because he will explode or you know melt down cause the Nuclear atmosphere to ignite yeah. light on fire yeah and then while that's happening a threat from the original godzilla emerges that killed the original godzilla um in the form of a um insect or creature that was from the pre-cambian era about billions of years ago that in an era where there was no oxygen but basically a threat has emerged from the weapon that killed the original Godzilla that um, Japan and Godzilla will also have to deal with in this ticking time bomb scenario. Yeah, while there's a great ticking clock of Godzilla reaching 1,200 degrees centigrade. Uh, Rugs, you found something? You think the bu- the, bu- the budget's about $10 million? Yeah, that was the same budget with the King Ghidorah movie. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So Makes I would sense. say it's some probably either a little bit more or a little bit less than the 10 million. That is about how yeah, much they, sp- they spent on uh, Minus One, too, which is very interesting. That's how much they spend on movies, I guess. Yeah. $10 Back million. That's what they got. They, they hard cap it. Even if inflation <laughs> doesn't, doesn't goes matter. up, 10 million. Still 10 million. But it's yeah. been 20 years. Nope, 10 million. That's what we, <laughs> that's what we budget every year. But 10 million is like... it's. It, that's enough money to make a decent movie. Yeah, still yeah. it was. I mean, back then it had to be a lot, but it still is. I think, as we've seen by minus one. Uh, okay, uh, where should we go? I th- I think we should start with you. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. We both kind of already yeah. talked about it. I, well, we can ju- jump into it a little bit more in depth, but I think we should start with you since it's your pick. Yeah, I had and, never uh, seen never this seen movie, it. and it's interesting because you've never seen the movie and you don't have all the context that we have. As lifelong Godzilla fans, nor had followed that you're you're really you're kind of watching this movie out of order. Yes, that but was also, the, I'm interested. interested that was in the other thing I was concerned about. I was gonna ask you guys, do I need to know anything from the movies before? And I was a little worried, but it turns out you can just drop in and watch this movie and enjoy it. And I tell you what, I re- I really like this movie. I was very oh. I was very impressed. I think it has uh, a great balance of like kaiju action. And some the human elements also kind of work. Uh, I'd love the time period, the 1995. I love seeing all the old Apple computers. The fucking suit work in this and the design of a Destoroya is amazing. That fucking burning suit. I, and I did. I was reading a bunch of how like they did it. They put fucking light bulbs in there and covered it up. The guy's in a suit with hot ass light bulbs 
And the steam coming out of the burning Godzilla suit is fantastic. You would knock the guy out in the suit and yes. say to wear like a, a oxygen mask. So I watched yeah. that. Uh, what's that guy's name, Anthony, that you watch? Uh, oh, big Bill, action, big action, Bill. Big action Bill. Yeah. Bill. I watched his uh, thing the, on this the, movie. The, the, the guy is uh, Sat- Kat- Satsuma, Ken Panchiro Satsuma. Who in the suit. wasn't he? Did he do the original? No, he's the Heisei. Oh, era he's the Godzilla. Heisei era guy. He was in some of the show era stuff too, as the like mother. Mo- he played Hedorah and Gaigan. There's a shot in the big action Bill's thing of the, him just collapsing on the set in the suit because the suit would fill up with carbon monoxide. Which is what yeah. what that steam was. I love so I thought it worked for me because they kept referencing back to the 1954 Godzilla. So it was almost like outside of the junior storyline, which I was like, well, okay, I guess there was a little one in the last movie, whatever. It was kind of like a sequel to that first one, and uh, uh, and and I love the whole section that was like fucking aliens, uh, James Cameron aliens inspired. But the suit I thought was great. The music was really good. There's emotional parts. There's loss. There's some fucking disturbing shit. The end is crazy. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Like, I thought it was as as if this was like, and I know when I looked up how they like promoted this was basically they just had posters that says Godzilla dies and they had a funeral for him. And in 1995, if you saw this, you thought this is the end of Godzilla. I was like, that's fucking that's kind of emotional. But it's a it's a death and a rebirth. Yeah, I thought I thought it was really good. And like I also the practical effects still I thought they look really good. And this is the time of uh, in the 90s where slowly CGI is starting to mix in. You know, we see it in a lot of other movies. And I did. They, I think they did a good job with that. It was hilarious where they find the thing and he's like 3D enhance. And it's just fucking little pixel. There's like four little pixels and it just enhances into this crab creature. Uh, but yeah, no, I had a good time. I'm really glad I watched this. It felt like the end of something, like kind of heartbreaking end of something. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I want to get into some of the some of the things uh, and well, some of the things they did. But uh, what are your guys' memories of this movie? Favorite parts? Rugs, you can go. Let you go. Well, I saw a commercial for this. Not a commercial. A news broadcast about this. Uh, there, somewhere there's a like, CNN clip on the, YouTube that's talking yeah, like, about this were, movie. Yes, yeah, they reported it on some World News or some like sc- uh, stock exchange, World Stock Exchange thing. I saw. I just for some reason happened upon it, and I'm like, "Fuck! I gotta go get this movie when it comes out." So I'm like, I did the math in my head. I'm like, "Okay, if it comes out in Japan, it's probably gonna be available for bootleg like in like a a few months." So I went to like Chinatown and. And nice. look for it yeah, there, yeah. even though it's uh, yes, it's a Japanese movie. But you go to these places in in the city; they have everything. So that's why you go there because you're getting bootleg stuff from the east. Yeah, those dudes so, on the street with the blanket on the sidewalk and all this shit. Sure, the yeah. You go into some weird basement. Yeah, it, 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 you find the stuff. Anyhow, so finally I got it on VHS, and it was um really poorly uh subbed. Oh, like the subtitles weren't the greatest. But I, I watched it and um, it, that way a ton of times. And I just recently watched it. I, and and uh, the copy that I had uh, more recently was the dubbed version. And this is the first time I watched it with the actual Japanese approved subtitles. Okay. So I got like a little bit more out of it this time around. But uh, yeah, I, I saw this. On VHS, and uh, it was the death of Godzilla. I love the music. Number one, the music is great. Yeah. That is fucking uh, very memorable. They bring back the old music, but they 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 add more to it, and they kind of have that that the ending theme that's sad when Godzilla dies, yeah. and that right works man. really great. Great. There's some iconic shots. There's just like there's the suit. Mation, like the guy in the suit, I feel like waves his arm or arms around a little too much. But there are parts of like there's like one shot where Godzilla like stomps his foot and his mouth is open and he's like kind of careening towards the side. Yeah. Where he looks like he's in pain. Oh, oh yeah. And I'm like, wow, that really that really comes across like really well. And there's some, some iconic shots like that. They have the uh 
the destroyer crabs that they interact. They're small enough that the humans can interact with them, yep. but they're still pretty big yep. and threatening. And there's that whole car scene where the girls in the car. Yeah, that's a lot like a Jurassic Park. Almost. There's a lot of aliens. Yeah. There's Jurassic Park in this. Yeah. So there is they, they're trying their best here to like bring all this stuff in there. You got the stuff with Junior. Now, there's some like weird stuff with like Bandai toys and Apparently they that used- Junior's on. Like the, they slide Junior across the stage because <laughs> it, it was a prop. They used Bandai toys as some of the little destroyer crabs. Right. They had to have a prop Junior. So it would because the suit was the same size as the other Godzilla. So they had to make it look small. But I did like the Super X return. Super X three oh, comes back. I lo- That ship reminded me of like the, the Blackbird from the X-Men. It looked cool. I was like, that's a cool looking ship. And- well, that's a they bring back the Super X in. Uh, what's the other one that they bring? It was in the. In Biolante. Oh, okay. So they, yeah, Super X2 is in Biolante. Biolante and then this one. So they kind of close off with that. Uh, what else is great about this one? Um, Dude, the explosions and the miniature work and the fact that, that like that plane is real. Like I do. I appreciate their shots where they're just flying the plane by and it's clearly a, pro- a, a prop. But the the grandmother in the movie oh, was actually yeah. in the in the first Godzilla. Yeah, the, sa- was, the yeah. same character. She's playing the same character. Yeah, that's cool. Michael, you mean. Yeah, so they did a good job, like bringing the college student who is uh, the grandson of the doctor, right? And the, right. that's his grandmother. And then the, the reporter's his sister. Oh, right. Uh, and then you got the two ESP girls who can kind of uh, they're tracking Junior. Uh, they were that one of them has been in another movie, right? Yeah, the uh, Mickey, the one with the the wearing the um, the shorter hair. With the hat she's the been and in a bunch of them. She's been all, she's been in all the Heisei ones. It's up eighty four. It's up Return of Godzilla. And yeah, in in the uh, Biolante, she wasn't in eighty four, but yeah, she was in Biolante, and that's where the, they started this thing where they could either psychically feel Godzilla or communicate or try and communicate with Godzilla Junior or the the baby that they. I don't yeah, know, no, I got the feeling things. they could sense them. You know. Man, you know, and the suit work is amazing because I all, the whole time I was able to follow kind of like what Godzilla was saying, quote unquote, or like what is thinking or what that expression. And, and, and it, like it, in my head, the words would go off like what he's saying. Like, and so for them to be able to pull that off in this suit is is wild because it, it it's clear. It communicates somehow emotion. Um, I love when they freeze him, that whole effect of him slowly getting frozen was very cool in the water yeah in the water where the cgi there is actually pretty good yeah it's like practical layered with cgi as he freezes uh and he the other thing is funny is he like walks on this like deep ocean water a lot in this movie I'm like what is he walking <laughs> what the fuck is he walking on? yeah is he, he floats is he pa- is he dog i, I like paddling? to imagine that he's just waiting yeah he's dog like, paddling he, underneath his yeah, feet are going yeah. his tails go crazy i was like how the fuck is he walking around like yeah. i just feel like he's just emitting radiation and just and then oh it maybe that him keeps him afloat up. oh yeah because yeah. he eats yeah. it and and spits it out he shits it he sweats it out comes <laughs> he, out of his pores. so when those little Wait, you, you gonna get in my thoughts oh yeah gonna... no go ahead <laughs> <laughs> all right um, yeah, well, then we can dive into some of the more details, yeah. uh, some more of the details of the movie. Yeah, so this is, you know, if you listen to the last show, this is one of my, I was fighting fever, v- feverishly for this movie to go as far as it could. So you know that I like this movie. That said, I haven't seen this movie in a, in a, in a decent amount of time in its entirety. I remember seeing a uh, news ad, maybe for the, that he was dying, right? Or well, I think it was an ad for... Um, I forgot what the fuck it was an ad for, but uh, my dad figured out how to get a hold of a company that sold the tapes from Japan nice. with English dubbing. Oh, shit. And this one, along with like four other tapes, were there. I think Mecha Godzilla, Space Godzilla. I think I got like Godzilla Raids Again, which I thought didn't know that that was the second Godzilla that I had already seen, but I got like four or five tapes. Is this in 95? I probably got the tapes in like maybe 97, okay, 96, okay. 97. Okay. But yeah, way before an English dub ever came out. And I remember seeing the tape. The the hard clamshell case for this was insane. It was like an orange with Godzilla and baby Godzilla and then like him on him in the fire and then this like insect looking thing on the ground. I'll uh, I'll try to find it. I think that's the, the the illustrated poster that the same yeah. guy drew out painted all these posters and it's fucking awesome. 
that's an awesome one. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I, I love that one. I will put it in the chat once we are. Well, they said it's notable because Godzilla is in the back and he's like the main threat. Actually, I just posted it in the okay. chat, which is the car- cover of and that 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 cover was amazing. So I remember very vividly. I wanted to watch Godzilla versus Space Godzilla first. I watched that one, and then I threw this one on. And I didn't know that the Godzilla was dying in oh, this movie. Oh, no. So, literally, I remember one of the, my first memories is they show Godzilla walking around with the orange in his body. That's where he's like on fire. And I vividly remember turning off the VCR, turning off the TV and rewinding it because I thought the VCR was broken. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, well, Godzilla doesn't look like that. Why What's does going he on look here? like that? I thought the I thought the the VC, I thought there was something wrong with the tape. Oh my god! Um, but yeah. Anyways, cause, no. So now rewatching it, um, yeah. This movie, I will say this. I think Imran might you might be an outlier. I don't know that you can fully like. I don't know this is a movie you can just drop in. Okay. And most people will like. Okay. I think you're an outlier. I think what makes this movie, besides all the things you guys said, what makes this movie all the make you have all the feels and really understand and feel something is the history before it so if you were like me as a kid that saw a lot of the godzilla movies or grew up watching all the heisei and then you see this movie and you're like oh fuck like this is this is the culmination of all this shit like i don't know there's some the human characters they're fine they do bring back emiko yamane the kids are of grandchildren of dr yamane There is Mickey, who's you know the, the kind of the thread throughout these, but the human characters are just there to serve the plot. Like they're not really, it's not about them. It's about Godzilla. Yeah, it's about his death. And what the thing that makes this movie stick out, the things that make this movie stick out to me, similar to Rugs. First off, Akira Ifukube's score is fucking awesome. Like right from the beginning, when they do the title credits, and it's like. Duh! like very yeah. epic yeah. like and they're like and then it's like the dun, 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 like it like yeah, destroys his little yeah. like, arc or uh, song and the the use of the old school stuff like the music is just so good yeah. throughout this movie that it just gets you pumped up um i love the burning godzilla suit i love that destroyer kind of looks unlike anything that you've seen in a Godzilla movie. They've got like the insects thing and they got the alien thing. And then he kind of looks like the devil reincarnated. Yeah. Um, that scene where he's in his final form oh, and they're playing huge. the music. Holy shit. He's, he's just gigantic. He's so big. Um, you've got the stuff with junior where juniors back and juniors fighting. And then, you know, Destroyer kills Junior. I know. And then you get all sad, and then you just want Godzilla to kick his ass. Godzilla has a I moment mean, with Junior as he's dying. Yeah, the, like, the, the oh, li- he tries to breathe life into yeah, him. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, the lines, people crying. going, Godzilla's crying. This is Godzilla's last battle. Yeah, that one, the may, this may be Godzilla's yeah. last battle, he's and then that crying. music hits where it's like, dun, dun, oh my God. Dun, dun. Like, they're just, it's just a very um, epic movie because it's, you know, it's the end. Um, but yeah, I think music, the battles, the the scene where at the end Godzilla's overheating and he's like he's projecting this orange energy, and all the explosions start firing yeah. off around him. Yeah, and that's destroy. great. Yeah, that I mean, and you're like, holy shit, those two guys are in suits yeah. and there's like fire. No, they <laughs> going all I, around I, them. They destroyed a couple of suits making this. They had to. I, yeah, I mean that scene where it's like. I, I always remember that scene of the, the the explosions while they're all where they're both facing off at the end. Well, the first time you see the destroyer's final form, it's through explosions. Like everything explodes, and he's just there around the actual explosion. Yeah, it's yeah, so that, good. That, that one's good too. But I, I think that one's like a composite shot. Oh, okay. I think the one where like what I'm talking about at the end is like real explosions. <laughs> and then you have you know his death and just how the music and like them freezing him and it being in like the cgi and then the, the the rise of the new one at the end like it's just it's just very um emotionally a heavy movie in my opinion i so, i didn't expect i was gonna see that either watching this i had no idea i was like that? what that godzilla was just gonna melt and die i was yeah, like he melts what and, the and fuck 
you get the you know the sad stuff and you also get like how brutal destroy is and, and throwing up his own blood like there's just a lot of i think I, i've mentioned it before but just i think there's a lot of like see, well done scenes i don't know that it's like the most the, like the best movie in terms of movie making in terms of like a full on getting invested in a plot but like as a Godzilla fan this was the culmination i think it still still hits pretty hard i just wish that godzilla would have gotten the final blow yeah on destroya yeah. cuz he kind of goes out like very abruptly and they needed to sit on that just a little bit more i would like to see that and then the destruction of infant island um but I guess they were trying to not expose Junior until later into the movie, so it would be right. like a surprise. So, yeah, those two things, like, I get why they did it. Like, Godzilla does get him really good, and he's trying to get away, and then the the, the forces hit him, finally freeze him, and then he dies. Well, so They, it was they established assist. that the freezing weapons will yeah. also work on the oxygen it's, monster. It was a combo. It was both of them, you know, were, but then what you do is once that's done, now you can give all the attention to Godzilla dying. I be, I know there's a bunch of articles where people are, you know, some people are like, well, why didn't the new, they had, should, should have had the nuclear reaction take Destroya out too. But I kind of like that he got killed and they helped and now you can, now you can just see this beautiful well, th- fucking There scene. is an alternate ending oh. where Godzilla and Destroya are fighting and um, the clock is run out and they just start firing upon both of them. Oh, so he's like Godzilla's me- I, I, the uh, the tape I had had the alternate ending. Oh, Godzilla's shit. fighting with Destroya. He, they're both like overheating. So then the f- Japanese people are f- trying to freeze both of them at the same time. And then and it's like them two fighting as they're both dying. Oh, but um, I think the Jap- the filmmakers made the right choice. They wanted to the focus to be on Godzilla. Yeah, that co- those colors when he melts away, it's fucking trippy and disturbing. Uh, the- oh yeah, I mean when he's melting and then Mickey's all like, um, like this, this is my job is basically done. Yes, so I over. have no more connection with guys. And you see his like skull and shit. I was like, this is fucking trippy. The first time that I watched it, and they were going toe to toe with each other, and I'm like, how's Godzilla gonna finish off this motherfucker? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh, he's going to rip his horn out and stick it in his eye or something. <laughs> oh, that would have been crazy. Because he was like hitting him with his horn. Yeah, he got sliced. Like he, he sliced him with yeah, his fucking laser horn. Yeah, and I was like, I want him to just grab it and like just snap it Never. off and just like do a nice killing blow. Well, though that fight scene, I love the part when they like cut to close ups of each of them like roaring yeah. into the camera and they're like, Rrr. and they're like, Godzilla like comes up to him and like shoulder checks him in the stomach. He's like, and he's like hitting him in the chest and like firing into his chest and destroys like spitting out his blood. I think I think they couldn't make it super dynamic because of two reasons. One, I think uh, Satsuma was like dying in that suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the guy in the destroyer suit, I think, could barely move because oh, that suit yeah. was so big. That suit is giant. And like when he first flies, I was like, oh shit, he can fly now. Everybody, uh, I love the the different forms, and I love even when they like broke down at the end and tried to attack him in the little crabs, mm-hmm. and that didn't work. And he was just him grabbing Junior and just dropping him. I was like, "Bro, what are you doing?" Now Godzilla's going <laughs> to be reminds, pissed. It reminded Jesus. me a lot of Hetera, to be honest with you. And yeah, they, oh, yeah, because he's got like multiple forms, and you think Godzilla can't beat him at all because he's so big and so much more. Powerful than Godzilla, but it, yeah. And then the humans come in and they they help uh, kill kill Hedora in the end too. So it's, it has like those perils to one of my favorite Godzilla movies right there too as well. And I guess well, what's interesting too is like the human characters originally lure Godzilla over there because they want Destroyer to kill him. Oh, I they thought want they, him. I thought they wanted Godzilla to kill Destroyer. No, no, they wanted well, Destroyer they, to kill Godzilla because they couldn't do anything to oh, him. Oh, shit. Yeah, they got Junior as bait. Mm. Right. They used him to lure Godzilla They, they about were to able Tokyo. to stop the explosion, but they weren't able, they realized once he unfroze that he wasn't going to explode anymore, but he was going to melt. Oh, man. Which is going to release all this nuclear energy still into so the world. they're like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they friend. needed Destroy to kill him, and then they realized, oh, fuck, Destroy is even, like, more of a menace than Godzilla. So, like, do you think that the story could have played out where they didn't do anything and then Godzilla exploded and just Junior just juiced up everything. And like the world would have been fine. 
<laughs> Potentially. I think the thing was is like Destroyer or Junior was still like way ahead of him. So I don't they I don't they I think the they made note that Godzilla wouldn't be even able to get to him in time. Well, they made also they also said that maybe Junior can't absorb radiation oh, like right. Godzilla can. Oh, but he he didn't, yeah, they did they say that know. too. So wait, what's Junior's origin? This is in the movie before. So in Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla in the High Sea era, yeah. they find an egg and then they hatch it and it's like a little Godzilla source. Oh, okay. Right. R- and- Rodan has like taken it's like when like uh when you lay an egg under when you put a random egg under like a chicken or yeah, a hen yeah. and they just automatically assume it's their egg. They, so it's yeah. like that thing. Okay, they imprint on Rodan, the Rodan like thinks it's his brother. Okay. And he's been protecting the egg, but it's really like, yeah, a little Godzilla. And then in space Godzilla, he turns into like like this weird looking version of, of Junior. And yeah, space like Godzilla's like capturing Godzilla, him. Like a very cute looking Godzilla. And now yeah. he's like a teenager in this one. Right. Yeah, and this one he looks now he looks like a grown up Godzilla. So right. in the storyline, he is now the Godzilla of the planet. At the yeah, end. so if you he's actually the gemstone Godzilla. So those CG Godzilla movies, if you watch that first one with Guy Gan, it has the same music and that silhouette at the end. Oh, it starts out with that. And so, you know, that that's junior. Yeah. So if you ever yeah, watch. If, the- if, yeah. If you yeah, have rugs is right. And yeah, if this if the Heisei era were to continue, he would have been the same next one. Yeah. Uh, the there was so that melting scene disturbed me. There was another scene that was very disturbing. It's in the middle of the movie. It's when those first organisms in the dirt samples actually get out of the little mm-hmm. beaker, and the guy, the security guard, is walking in the aquarium, and he just witnesses fish just dissolving. That was mm-hmm. that was a little disturbing. <laughs> that's a callback to the fifty four two. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, that's right. And I learned, yeah. So you learn a lot about micro oxygen. And I did love the clips of from the first movie, the Oxygen Destroyer, and why they call him. Now, why don't they call him Destroyer? And he's called Destroyer. I can tell you. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. So this is very funny because it all kind of happened uh, syrup. Uh, what is it serendipity? Serendipitously. Mm-hmm. Serendipitous. No, serendipitously. Okay. There we go. That's the word That's I was word? trying to say. So I was watching. Uh, big action bill and he was like oh they couldn't get the rights because somebody already owned the rights to destroyer and I'm like well what the fuck is that so I looked it up and I'm like oh it's Remo Williams Remo Will- the adventures so, Re- of Remo the, Williams so I'm like I know that movie and then I found it on Amazon Prime and I also watched it but anyway <laughs> so uh, Remo Williams is a movie from my childhood yeah. where a guy like learns like uh how to do like uh, how to be like a, a ninja, yeah, basically yeah. for the government. Yeah, the name of the book series is called the Destroyer series. Oh, so the company that started making the Remo William Dick Clark owned it and had the rights to re- the Destroyer. So he had the rights. He didn't call it the Destroyer because he thought it was like too menacing. That, this but is the Remo the right- William story is originally called the Destroyer. The Destroyer, oh, yes. That's weird. So the whole book series is called the uh, Destroyer series. So they went Destroyer. So I think that they couldn't use Destroyer because of that thing. And they they named it Destroyer. Dest- I don't know. Oh, I, yeah. That's that's the theory that I'm going with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think yeah, it was I a trademark wrong. thing where they yeah, couldn't so. get that the exact spelling. It's fun to say though. Uh well that all the, the the film still like even the Japanese say it as destroyer. Oh, they just, destroyer! They just feel they spell it. They differently. spell it destroyer. No, and I love like the callback to the fifty four, like the thing that killed Godzilla, brings him back. Brings, brings him back. His enemy threatens. Yeah. So the whole time they're like trying to kill Godzilla, but then I thought they're like, oh, we need his help to stop destroyer. But you're telling me that's not no. They no, were they were they were luring. That's why him. they they wanted him dead and they wanted destroyer. So the whole time they just wanted. Well, kill they Godzilla. well they just wanted. Him not to explode the world, right? <laughs> That's basically yeah. It. They, they were yeah. They, throughout the movie, they're like it's bigger than uh, like they. There's a line in there. I paraphrase it where they're like they're they go. It doesn't even matter if Tokyo gets destroyed. This yeah. is big. It's the world that's on the line. Yeah, Tokyo's left like, uh, uninhabitable at the end. Well, no, sort of. Yeah, it is uninhabitable, but just uh, Junior sucks up a lot of the. Oh, that's right, because the radiation dropped and then he rose, and I was like, "Oh shit, who's that?" And I was a little confused, but then I realized it's probably. Junior. If you notice in this movie, and this is a common theme for the Hayes era. It's a lot of um, 
people in a room watching yes the screens <laughs> yes they're yeah. watching screens of what's happening always. And, and like the this movie is just full of scientists and military yeah. men yep yep um one of the things that i noticed in rewatching this is there's a lot of human characters that probably don't need to be there <laughs> like sure you don't need two you mean grandchildren yeah like one's a scientist and one's a reporter they like do you have a little like reporter physicist love story that really doesn't go anywhere and then you don't need two ESP yeah. people. Yeah, why are the two ESP girls? You could have just kept yeah. it Mickey. Yeah. Like the other girls, like the U.S. Con- uh, special convoy. Yeah. So there were some things I was like, that's a little goofy. And uh-huh. then the other thing I noticed, and Big Action Bill pointed out, and then I noticed it watching it live, or a lot yesterday, um, some of the composite shots don't really work. <laughs> like, for example, in Hong Kong, you've got a shot of Godzilla rampaging and then you have like people walking up and down the yeah, street. Yeah, they're just casually they're like, <laughs> yeah, they're just like Dude. casually walking around. Some yeah. sushi. They do the Go same home. in jo- Tokyo too. Yeah. You have him like rampaging but then you have cars jo- like r- riding up and down the yeah. freeway yeah. Like, towards him. I know those shots <laughs> you're talking about where he's in the background and like nobody's running or anything. Just, they just like grabbed yeah. random yeah. shots of people doing their thing. Well, I, I like yeah. that he was in like different countries. He was in Hong Kong. It wasn't all Japan, right? He's destroying other well, places. Yeah, they, I don't think they had any budget. No. So <laughs> you can tell they didn't build a set for yeah. Hong Kong. It was all the composite shots. Still, man, that suit work, it, it's weird how it holds up. Like, it's just, it's super impressive. Oh, yeah, you guys hit the nail on it. Like, his, the suit design, and then the way that they're able to convey emotion. Yeah through the suit work how is still top notch. I know what he's thinking. Like I can tell there there's great shots in it. There's a, there's a lot of great iconic Godzilla shots in this. There is just uh, that suit and the music mm-hmm. and the ominous tone. They all kind of come together. Like he's going to explode. Yeah. All right. And he's, then you throw his kid in there mm-hmm. and, or this, you know, and then you're like, all of a sudden you're concerned about the kid and you got Mickey Who's kind of taking you through her concern for Godzilla and and Junior? So all these things kind of make it a much better movie than a lot of the other ones. And so then, and then uh, you have the the tie to the original with the monster that he's fighting, who looks like the devil and is just way bigger than him, and and you know kills his son. Yeah, like there's just there's just so many. Um, the emotion is already built in yeah. because you're watching this usually as a Godzilla fan, knowing that this is his death, but then you're trying to like deny the impossible and they keep throwing like roadblock, like, Oh, and he's felting. Oh, and, and his son is in danger. Oh, and he's fighting the, the biggest monster he's ever fought. Like it's just one thing after another and he keeps fighting back. Like there's at least three scenes where he gets his ass kicked yeah. and then they do like an epic, like he rises up yeah. and he's just like, I was like I'm fuck this motherfucker, yeah. I'm getting him. Even uh, Junior gets a couple of good jabs in. Oh yeah, before. The, the Junior um, destroyer fight's pretty good yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. But before he gets his ass before kicked. Before that, he gets his ass <laughs> they kicked. They both get their ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. They both get dragged around yeah. and oh, thrown yeah. around. Yeah, that, that scene where... Um, oh, he grabs him with a tail and he's just dragging him in the runway oh, yeah. and spinning him around is amazing. That one, I was going to reference the one where he's destroy, um Junior's fighting the crab version, and he's on his back, and oh, he yeah. starts getting, he gets punctured in the throat, and he yeah. starts um, foaming at the mouth. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, that that's was a good a, one, that too. That was interesting. Yeah, that was an interesting detail. Yeah, yeah I remember it, these toys, I remember seeing at all the G-Fests I go to. Now I get it. Like, I, Oh, I, I have the Godzilla and Destroyer toy. Yeah, it's, the, the, the design is amazing. The scale is amazing. Yeah. What do you think of uh what do you think of Destroya? I mean, he's fucking he's fucking dope. He's dope. All the he's <laughs> he's giant and he can fly and he's got blue some weird blue ray that does something to a person, puts a swirly on them. I don't know exactly what that thing is doing. <laughs> but you got the alien mouth coming out of the mouth. You know, mm-hmm. they just put everything in this thing. Yeah, no, they 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 definitely love their alien. It was that whole scene with the military and him sneaking around like that's a direct homage. And I'm not gonna say they rip it off. It's a direct. Oh, they rip it off. I think you even have the motion tracker real quick in the quick shot, yep. right? Like they had. And they coming out of the ceiling. And it comes out of the ceiling, and it's I'm like this is fucking aliens. Well, the thing too well, is, see- as, as a Godzilla fan, you didn't have the humans really interacting with the creatures like sure, that. Sure, and you never had a a creature that wasn't really like a bipedal creature. Yeah, like yeah. this one was the first where you had this like insect looking thing. Eerie crab like thing. And it's very smart that it's crab, smaller yeah. and bigger and it's the size of them. And it's, 
and it gets bigger and it's just fucking shit up. Well, Biolante was really big. Biolante was, oh, yeah, you're right. It was massive, but he never, uh, he never, uh, she never broke into little pieces. Biolante like, bigger you know. than Destoroya in the final form? Probably. I think they're, probably, I think they're about the same size, or shit. but yeah, Biolante is is pretty massive as well. But I never thought it was like I, I never thought it was as big of a threat because there was the. There was no like Godzilla is uh, is about to melt down in right. that movie. There was right. just like okay, can Godzilla destroy this thing? And uh, so I think that the stakes are a little higher in this. Yeah, week, I mean that's the thing. It has a, a little bit of everything. It's got a ticking clock. It's got death. It's got birth. It's got father son shit. Uh, I thought it was a, just a nice package uh, and a crazy ending. So, well, you, okay. speaking of the ending, you also have again that epic meltdown them firing upon godzilla him melting you kind of think he's dead and then they have the silence they wade through and then you see the roar the yeah. silhouette yeah and then the end credits oh are godzilla's march and the and a recap of all the heisei plus the 54 oh. movie, which also is pretty epic well, did, did you watch the end credits no i think i missed that oh i didn't know yeah. that. that that as a kid also like pumped me up oh. i was like oh my god look at all these like dun, 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 and it's like qu- quick shots of him in different movies and like, like you really i mean it, it really at the time yeah it really felt like this was it i mean that's what i was trying to put myself in that 1995 if you're a godzilla fan and because, they're telling you because you, when you say it in the recap you're like they didn't make another godzilla film in for three years yeah. which isn't that long right. and you're like they didn't make another godzilla film in japan for four years which again isn't that long yeah but at that time you're like that's it that's it yeah it? it felt like that was it well, the whole thing was that they were thinking that America was going to make a bunch of God's right. They wanted so, to hand it over. and But then when 98 rolling out flops, with 98 flops, they make, yeah, uh, 2000 and then go back. So, yeah, I remember reading, too, that like after this ended, people were writing in. You had to write in. Please don't let 90s, this be. Yes. That like, no, don't like bring him back. Don't kill him. Like people felt really emotional about they it. They had funerals and shit, public funerals uh, Toho held and they like a crazy that marketing campaign was crazy just to tell him he's going to die. You gotta well, the thing too, like I keep going back to this, but other than the first movie, you never, even, even though the show era movies don't really count in this continuity, yeah. you never really saw a movie where Godzilla died. Really? Oh, no, you, they, none of them had him die until this one. Oh. So it'd been forty years yeah. since you'd seen What's Godzilla die. What's the closest die? that he got in the show? Up? The close, the one that I'm coming up with is like when him and Kong fall in the water. Oh, okay. Or when him and uh, Mothra, Mothra wraps him in her cum, and then she <laughs> oh, falls yeah. in the water. But it's always him falling in the water. But even Dur- versus King Ghidorah, he doesn't really uh, come close to death, right? Yeah, you you never really like saw him die. That 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 was a big thing. Like as a kid, I was like, "Holy crap, he dies!" Like, in Gigant, he bleeds a lot. Yeah, but he never comes close to dying. So either. that is, I guess, in eighty four, he falls into the volcano. But you, they don't th- they don't play it off like he's dead. So how my the end of minus one is also interesting. How they did that kind of just blowing his head off, but he's and then he's just going to regenerate. So he kind of dies, but doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this one like legit. This other one than the fifty four, they 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 definitively kill yeah. Godzilla. Now he's there's the sun comes up, yep. which is nice, yep. but yep. they kill a Godzilla in this one. Okay, okay, yeah. No, he dies. He fucking melts. It's fucking crazy. He melts. You see it. It's it's the music. I mean, I can't say enough. Ifakube, who's the the OG yeah. of the composers, yeah. he came back for this. The music is yeah. just so good. Well, and really how good. they used it, right? All the yeah, ambient sound timed. would come out. They would everything would be silent, and it would just be the music in a scene where there should be a lot of noise and roaring and a lot of sounds. All that strips away, and they just put the. I was like, oh shit, this is it, fucking great. You want to know something that's great about the music is that it had so much impact that whenever I hear it. It it really does evoke that, especially that last song. Mm-hmm. Really does evoke like just watching the ending of that movie again. It's kind of like when you hear the Batman theme from like nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, how like yeah. you just felt like you're in the seat again watching yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 got the same kind of power. Yeah, he he's quoted as saying something along the lines of that requiem scene. He was really emotional doing because ah. he felt like it was like his his ending scene, like. It was his, it was his last of, yeah, it, song. Right. So it almost, it almost felt like it was the end for him. The end of his career as well. But I mean, even the, like the 
destroy a theme is great. Like the and the the updated version of of the, the March, theme, yeah, the March. Like yeah. it's all really good. Yeah, the music is fucking epic. Dun, 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 dun. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I mean the yeah, it's it's the March when he's like walking towards Destroyer. It's just without the music, this movie's like not as good. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. not even close. to No, the as music good. does help. It a does lot. a lot of the heavy lifting. Well, and the th- I think the thing if you start watching a lot of Godzilla films, Imran is yeah. like you'll notice how the good music really elevates these sure, movies. Sure, like the the music is just as big a part of these movies as anything. And usually it's a Vakube. Otherwise, or in the seventies, they went pretty wild with some of the music they were doing. Uh, yeah, because I don't think there was any of that in that head- hetera. No, it's right? not a Vakube. It, it's, it's a really weird, yeah. different. It's guy all fucking the music. funky, yeah, like trombones. Yeah, it's like yeah. psychedelic, like, weird ass shit. Yeah, that, yeah, I like this. I like this better. All right, let's uh, rate it and uh, rank it. I kind of didn't we do this already? No, did we? we did a whole tournament? No, we oh. did do a whole tournament. <laughs> we did do a whole tournament, but I want a number. I want you guys to rank it. I guess against the Heisei era. I also want to know what's your favorite Heisei era movie. Oh, and that's the Heisei. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna go first and just give it a number. Like I, I want to give this an eight. I really like this. I thought it was a great motherfucker movie. It was emotional, good classic suit work. Uh, yeah, solid. I'm glad I watched it. Anthony, I think if you're not a Godzilla fan, you're probably not. Other than Imran, I don't think you'd really understand this. I mean, what's not to understand is very straightforward. Aside from yeah, but I don't think you fully yeah understand the emotion of seeing the guy die. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Um, and the kid, like, there's a lot of like things that I don't know you can fully get without being a fan. Yeah. Um, so I think like on its own, the movie's okay. Like, if you don't have that context. I want the fan um, number. But yeah, I mean, for me, this was as a kid, this was like a nine or 10 out of 10. Yeah. I think and as an adult, I'm going to lean towards like an eight and a half. Okay. Nine, eight and a half, nine. It's, it, it's more the, the, like the context of when this came out, yeah. when I saw it and then how it's held up for me over time. As far as like my favorite Heisei era movie. Yeah. Man, I like a lot of Heisei era movies. Um, I'd have to rewatch them, but like this one, Mecha Godzilla two, okay. and um, Biollante are like my favorite to rewatch. Okay, I think Return is like really good. I don't know if it's like the most rewatchable movie. Uh, I, I would say between the two, I'd say I kind of like. Mm, mm-hmm. I'll fl- I flip flop back and forth. Today I'm saying I like Destroyer more. Yeah. But uh, usually it's for me the Heisei is either this one or Mecha Godzilla. Okay, 2. okay, but it's definitely the Mecha Godzilla Two has some awesome music too. Mm, okay, go backwards and watch these. Okay, rugs. Mecha Godzilla Two is when he debuts the orange. Oh, uh, fire breath. Oh, 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 yeah, because it yeah. was like blue usually, and it's in glitter. It's glitter. <laughs> it's yeah, glitter. And there's glitter that like melts Mecha Godzilla. That's a whole thing. Too. Yeah, there's a lot of glitter. In <laughs> okay, um. <laughs> same director, so yeah. Yeah, same director. Uh, yeah, Anthony's right on the money with all of these because I also will say Mecha Godzilla is if it's one of my favorites and Biollante also. Yeah, those are so. Great. I think the strongest movie I think as a film is me- is probably Biollante. Okay, that's a good choice. Uh, mm. I think that the most fun is Mecha Godzilla, and the one right in the middle between the two is Staroy. Staroy for you, okay. Well, yeah. I know what uh, two other movies I'm going to watch then out of this Heisei era. And I give it a, did I say I gave no, it an eight? Give, oh, eight? We okay. Eight, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Give it an eight. eight solid. I like the eight. You you yeah. should next do like a, a different era. Oh, everyone, just, sh- uh, should I go Showa? Showa or like or Millennium? The, or Millennium. Just to, just to fuck with yourself. Mm. Just should to I, see the difference in like. Should I watch the eras? the last movie of every era? Oh god. That would be Final Wars. <laughs> well, Final Wars for and, Millennium. I mean, Final Wars and Terra Mecha Godzilla yeah. aren't like those are not too shabby to watch. Oh, really? The, those are interesting movies okay. to watch. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely one is very different than the other, but yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, both, I'm having fun watching and, this. And if you compare all three, they're all wildly different. Oh my god. No, I'm having fun watching this just completely out of order for no reason. It's kind of fun. So maybe I'll check out the last movies in the other two eras next. That maybe, might be good, maybe, right? Maybe I feel like we I, I feel like if you're watching any from the Millennium, I think the ones with Kiryu are the best. Uh, that's my opinion. But hmm. 
That's uh, the I new like Mecha the Godzilla. Ones, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Final Wars would be a fun one for you to watch and run. Yeah, 2004. So we advance into the 2000s. Okay. All, all I can say about Final Wars, if you watch that next, is... Yeah. Hold the, on to your hat. <laughs> okay. the, the, the emotions you will feel will not be the same. No? No, it's the completely different tone. Okay. This one was smoke a lot of weed. Okay. Well, I can That's tell fine. You. I'll do that anyways. <laughs> that, you'll love it. Yeah. This one was yeah. emotional and stuff. So, okay. There. This one what is going to give you, make you shit your pants. <laughs> okay. That's what what do you think of Destroyer's Roar and Run? Uh, the, I like mean, a banshee. It, it, was, it was the hot, it's a little more higher pitched, screechy, right? Mm-hmm. It is kind of ear piercing. Um, it's uh, it's the roars kind of sound the same to me. I don't know. I did, did really, it, yeah. Like I noticed the music and stuff. The roar. I'm trying to think. It just seemed like very high pitched, screechy, uh, with a little, I don't know, static on it or something. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, the 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 difference in roar sometimes doesn't always land on on my ears. I think. I can tell all the difference. Yeah, no, it's crazy that you guys. I, I, we should play a game where I just play different roars and you tell me what movie it's. Oh, I'll I'll lose that. Oh, you will. Yeah, that would be a fun game. You should make a game. I know Titanosaurus. And that's the only. Oh, Titanosaurus. <laughs> he's like a whiner. Yeah, he's got a very distinct. Yeah. All right. Well, look. Let's do uh, some news from the nation. Here we go. It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. <laughs> it stinks. It stinks. It stinks. Uh, I just got one thing. Daryl K posted this article from the Hollywood Reporter saying uh dan trachtenberg who uh did that movie prey on hulu which was really good he got an emmy nomination he is going to be making a new predator movie titled badlands this is not a sequel to prey uh but it may also feature a female lead this article says uh and he wrote the story uh with patrick Ason. Um, it's called Badlands. Maybe in the future, unclear. But what do we think? We after Prey, we were uh, it was really good. I want to see more Predator movies like that. Uh, but I don't know what this Badlands is. If it's going to kind of keep that same tone of the Predator in a new environment, having to kill different time periods, I don't know. But does this make you guys hopeful, excited, anything? I don't know yet. Just saying, just announcing a movie doesn't make me uh, that intrigued. It's when I know what the deal is. What's what's the what's the gimmick? What are we what are we talking about? Yeah. Here? See, there's no other details. Just that he he's coming. He's going to make another one, but it's not the. I'm sequel. curious, yeah. but like, I'm not excited yet. I and I they may be working on a sequel to Prey, so I don't know if this will come out before or after. Anthony, what do you think? Well, I like that the guy involved in Prey is doing this. I'm yeah. reading the article, yeah. and it looks like they're supposed. The studio wants to do a bunch of Predator stuff with him, oh. kind of as the lead. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need a sequel to Prey. No. I think you can jump around sure. time periods and stuff. Um, so I'll say I'm interested because the, of who is involved. Yeah, I feel the same way. He's got a handle on it, and if they want to give him. You know, the creative control. Uh, let's see what he has. Let's see. I love Prey. Prey was fucking awesome. But Prey's good. Yeah. I want to see do one in like feudal Japan, like Shogun and this Predator. Do Shogun with Predator. How hard is that? It's very easy. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. But then, you know, also present day. We've seen the present day ones they made. They weren't great. But okay. New Predator movie. The Nothing dies. Everything's continuing. Okay, let's just finish up with some what are we watching? Anthony, you got anything? Uh, No, just watching the Super Bowl, and that was about it. Uh, Ruggs, you watch The Adventures of Remo Williams. Yeah, I'll give you a really quick uh, synopsis. It uh, stars, I think, is Fred Ward? Uh, yeah, is his name. yeah, yeah. He's a cop. He... Uh, he dies in a his car goes over into the river 
and he drowns, but he wakes up in a bed. His face has been reconstructed and he's been told that he is now has a new life and he's going to be a, a top secret operative for this organization called Cure that is kind of like a deep state thing. And he has to be like this uh, assassin that like uh, can't like can leave no trace behind. Like it makes it look like an accident type thing. And so they they make him train with this Korean guy named Chun, who hates white people <laughs> and uh, thinks that all white people smell like hamburgers <laughs> and uh, insults the guy all the time, how, he, how inferior he is, and trains him to be a ninja. Oh, he's a ninja. Of course he is. And so uh, hilarity ensues. And soon they get their first mission where they got to bring down this arms dealer. And uh, it's a very good movie uh, for as a cult film. Yeah, like, it's not yeah. like a good movie. It's a bad like, 80s movie. It, it's, it's a bad 80s movie. Yeah. Fun, fun to watch. It's a fun little movie. But the most egregious thing they do is that they cast a white dude to play a Korean guy. And he's oh in heavy God. makeup. Oh, my God. And oh he's no. doing this accent that he's trying his best, but it's, it doesn't quite work. But. I didn't know this as a kid. <laughs> I had no idea that he wasn't Korean. It's like Fisher Stevens. I had Stevens no clue in, until in that movie. Yeah, I had no clue till now. And then I realized that I'm like, oh, this is a bigger. I thought Remo Williams was like this one off thing. But then I realized it was from this, these Destroyer books that they Dick Clark had bought the rights to. And so he was trying to make like a, a whole series of movies, but no one went to watch this. And uh, he tried to continue it on to TV. And then. Um, it, it, when he made it for TV, he also cast Roddy McDowell <laughs> to play Chun. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm like, why don't you just get a Korean dude to be a Korean dude in these when movies? When they try to make Fred Ward like an action guy, like a Chuck Norris. Yeah, he's like a Charles Bronson. A Charles yeah, Bronson. It did not dude. happen. Here's what I remember of this movie. I This came out in 1985. I remember hearing about this for years. I saw, I've seen it once. I barely remember. I know he was hanging off the top of the fucking Empire, uh, Statue of Liberty at one point. He dodges bullets him. Uh, yeah, well, see, uh, and walks on. Water. I might have to watch this again because this also when like Jim Cotta came out. Remember Jim Cotta? Yeah, there was the whole era of like white guys learning karate all because of Karate <laughs> Kid and none of the movies were very good. That's what this is. It's Karate yeah. Kids meet meets government agent like James Bond. It's actually called Remo Williams. The adventure begins and it, and then it stops. And then it, stopped. This movie. it never began. It barely started. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I remember this movie from my childhood, so it's on Prime. I may have to just check this out again because it's been a long time, and I remember it being. It's it, it it's it's a cult yes. movie. It's not yeah. it's, you're not you're not going to be impressed, but I think it's it's still a good time. All right, anything else you watched that was of note? Uh no. Wilfred Brimley no, yeah. is in uh, Remo Williams, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is before he had diabetes. Yes. Diabetes. Uh, 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 <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> Um, Wilfred Brimley. Kate Mulgrew was in it. Oh, uh, yes. fucking Captain Janeway. Yeah, that's right. She was in there. Very awkward. <laughs> uh, they tried to make her like into like the you know the femme in this movie. Yeah, didn't work. And I was like, no, nah, it's Kate no, Mulgrew. It's, you, she, you can't do that. Nineteen eighty-five, Kate Mulgrew. Was, uh, what else? Anything else? No, that's it. I didn't see it. Okay, I just got uh, two things. I finished that Mister Mrs. Smith on Amazon with Donald Glover. It's really good. It's really good. There's some good action scenes in it, but it's really like a, it's a show about relationships and learning about somebody else and learning to trust a stranger and what it means to be married and all this shit. But great twists and turns, great cameos. I highly recommend Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon. And then randomly, so I had to record a guest appearance uh, for this podcast I've done a couple of times called TV and Movie Trivia. Did it. This is the third time I did Iron Man the first time, did Raiders of the Lost Ark. This last recording, I did trivia for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So I rewatched that and fuck, that movie still holds up. It's so good. Which one is that one? The this first is the one? The second one. Oh, okay. The yeah, first Matt Reeves one. Fucking Koba and Koba. Uh, Jason, oh, yeah. Jason Clark and. Uh, Koba, not ape. Koba. Koba belong in cage. Yeah, ape, not up, kill ape. Okay. Man, fucking Caesar kills him in front of everybody. Yeah, what? That's it's, a great them. Their they're little like that battle is amazing. Back and forth, yeah. dialogue to each other before they start fighting. Koba fight for it's Koba, great. and he's yeah. like Caesar has no place here. Caesar Apes follow Koba. Has no yeah. place here. Apes 
follow Koba now. It's like I love that how the speech in the in the movie slowly evolves, right? Yeah. They know sign language really well, but it seems like an effort for them to talk. Like it almost hurts. Right. But fucking Toby Kebbell's performance, Andy Serkis's performance. The the special effects still look really good. And just, the scene where Koba like plays off like he's yes, a dumb ape yes, and then kills great. him. He does it yeah, twice. Really where he's just, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Uh the first time to get away, and the second time he drinks the booze and he grabs the gun yeah. and then he's just like <laughs> <laughs> and then he just looks at the other guy and just goes Brr. and I was like he's great. fuck, he fucking just killed them. He yeah, that movie's him. awesome. That's an all time movie. I love that Dude, movie. Dude, the scene of Koba riding a horse with two guns with the like, fire in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. shit. That's yeah. And scene. then that turret scene. scene, the point of view shot when he gets on the tank and the tank's just going and the thing's spinning and you're watching no, this I chaos. Watch it again. Oh, shit. Yeah, fu- they got fucking, and you got uh, Gary Oldman still in like James Gordon mode coming right off of uh, Dark Knight Rises. He's essentially Gordon in this yelling at people and you know, getting him to do things. He's got the fucking rocket launcher. It's so good. So good. Yeah, it's really good. Great movie. So that's what I watched. That's it. it, it that the apes movies still, though, remind me of when uh, Slattery and Shang-Chi was talking about Planet of the Apes. Oh, how yeah. He was, like, how perplexed. do they teach those horses to, those monkeys to ride the, monkeys the, apes to ride the horses? horses. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe they got them to use guns. How do they train them on using guns? Shit. They're shooting those shits one handed. No kickback. All muscle. Just fuck it. They never shot a gun before. <laughs> and then they're just like, Brr. it's great. <laughs> yeah, I do think of that fucking Mandarin line. It's hilarious. It's inspiring. They're acting. <laughs> uh, all right. That's it for this week. Rugs. Where can the people find you online? Rug boy show on X. Everyone at rug. boy show is this. New I have home. maybe three followers. No, I think you've got more, but we, we can get more. I put it in uh, the dis- I put it in the thing on our Twitter, our profile, our bio feature. Nice, thank so you. Maybe people will click on that. Uh, Anthony, where can the listener find you online? I'll be one of three people at the Madam Web showing. <laughs> oh week, yes, so. we'll all be in empty theater separately. I'll be thinking of you guys. Oh yeah, and I'm in the empty theater on Valentine's Day. Well, Are gonna- you going on Valentine's? No, Day? no, I'm going to see it on Thursday. <laughs> I'm not fucking going on Valentine's Day. I'm kidding. We- I do want to see who would show up on Valentine's Day, but you'll see it on the Thursday. Watch it, Madam Web, next week, right here. Uh, most important thing you can do, listener, share the show, spread it around. Thank you for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. We'll peep you next time. Fuck that show. I'm pumped. Yeah, me too. This thing, I offered you a chance to be a cop, and you blew and it. And you blew it. Jock and Nerd. <laughs> <laughs>